Yeah, welcome back to the movie show on Think Tech at 1 p.m. on a given Tuesday with George Case. And George, so nice to see you. I'm so glad we can do this. I feel romantic, George. I'm telling you now. Yeah, the two romantic movies, very different from each other. But we'll discuss it. Yeah. Tell us uh, which movies you want to talk about today, George. I'll start with the Woody Allen movie because it's co romantic comedy. And I really enjoyed the, rom I like comedies. And, and there's four vignettes in this. Uh, the first one, Woody's in it. He's the father of Haley, who is an American student that goes to, to, uh, to Rome and meets this Italian um, pro bono uh, attorney who helps the, those who are indigent, don't have money, you know? So, um, and, and uh, she, she meets him and they sort of fall in love and they want to get married. So her parents, Phyllis and Jerry, come from America to meet the family of the, of the, of the, the husband, the prospective husband. So, so it seems that Jerry, who's the Woody Allen character, he was sort of an opera director or something like that into music, you know, and, and, and he hears the father of, of Michelangelo, who's the, the prospective husband, singing in the shower because they came a little early. And the guy is phenomenal, Pagliacci, he's, he's singing Pagliacci. So, so, so always the entrepreneur, right, uh, the money man, Jerry says, this guy's phenomenal, I'm going to make him a star, right? So at first Giancarlo says, no, no, I don't want to do that, I just sing in the shower for myself. So bottom line is, he gets him up to, to do an audition. Giancarlo, who's the father, who's an undertaker. That's his profession. That's right, right. He's an undertaker. An undertaker. Right. Listen to this. So the thing is, he, he gets in front, but he doesn't want to shake hands with that man. <laughs> yes. He, he, Jerry, yeah. Woody doesn't want to shake hands because he's, he's the hands of that guy in some dead body or formaldehyde or whatever. <laughs> Woody is um, unbelievably funny. I, I was rolling in my chair, almost fell out of my chair. Okay. So the bottom line is, he, he gives him for an audition. But the, the thing is, he doesn't, he doesn't do well because he's not comfortable, right? Because he's not in the shower, you know, he's come. So then Woody f figures, <laughs> oh, we're going to convince him to do. So they get him in a, in, on the stage in a shower booth, right? In front of at the opera, right? With all these people in the audience, right? And, he, and, and he's and, naked. He's and, naked and, covered, and the water you know? is running on him on the stage. The water is running, but they got him his private parts covered, and he's phenomenal. The audience just claps. He's amazing, right? Because he's at ease, right? So this is this one, and then it, it goes back and forth, you know, and the 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 the, the public, you know, the news people call him imbecile, right? Imbecile. But Woody, who's Jerry, who's Woody, thinks that this is. Wonderful because he doesn't understand the word imbecile. He means imbecile, stupid. So that's that one. That's Haley and Michelangelo. That's the first one. Okay. Then the second one is right out of Fellini, 1952 movie, The White Sheik. Woody just takes the plot from Fellini, right? It's this young couple, uh, recently just married, newlyweds, right? They come to Rome. From, from a small town in Italy, right? Because his in-laws are gonna give him a job, right? And they're very well connected in, in Rome, right? So, so Nilly, the wife, they're in the hotel room. She doesn't like her hair because she's gonna see her, her, her in-laws, her friend, her, his family, right, in Rome. So she wants to go to the hairdresser and she gets lost in Rome, doesn't know. She's asking people all these directions. Finally, she comes on a movie scene, right? And it's her fa her favorite Italian actor, right? Not a very you know good looking guy, right? You know, but but she loves him, right? So she wants to meet, you know, to talk with him. And meantime, she's a young woman. He's attracted to her, so he wants to have make love to her. You know, doesn't care that she's married or whatever. So he convinces her to go to his hotel room, right? To 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 make love to him. And just as they're, as they're ready to make love, a burglar comes in and, and robs them, robs uh, the, 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 the actor, robs her for, for jewelry. And, and, then, and then at that moment, the actor's wife with a whole bunch of uh, you know, people coming, uh, detective, you know, a private 
private detectives, right, comes and barges in. So, so the actor runs into the ba bathroom and then they make it like the, like the, the burglar and, and Millie are having sex, right? So they have sex. This is typical Woody Allen craziness. So the <laughs> wife comes in knowing that her husband's having an affair and he's not there. He's hidden in the bathroom. So they all get upset and they leave, right? Meantime, uh, a young guy, right? The, the, the young guy, what was his name now? Oh, Antonio, 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 Antonio. He, a, a prostitute, mistakes the room, comes into his room, right? And, 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 and just as she comes and jumps in and she insists, she says, no, no, I, I didn't call for you. She insists on, on doing it, right? So she jumps in bed with- This is Penelope Cruz. This is Penelope Cruz. Penelope okay. Cruz in that movie, she wears this short red dress. Beautiful. She is absolutely stunningly beautiful. Stunning. The whole thing is, that's the price for admission right there. Exactly. She never looks so good. I've seen her before. We've all seen her before. But in this movie, she was absolutely she fabulous. Unbelievable sex object, right? So she's a <laughs> prostitute, Anna, right? And, and just as they're starting to have sex, the family, his family that's supposed to meet him, right, to give him a job, bursts in because Anna had left the door open. So they push the door open and they see him in bed with this prostitute. So he figures at the last minute he can't say it's a prostitute. He said it, it's his it's his wife, right? So so he that this whole thing, and then eventually later, when she finds out he was a vir he's a vir he was a virgin that that's their wedding night, she wants to have sex with him in the woods. So that that's that's a, that's another one. Then the, another one with Alec Baldwin is a is an architect, and he's sort of like in the scenes as a he sort of comes in and out of the scenes. It's like a, a mirage kind of thing. And he was well, he's, he's reliving his he's, life in Italy exactly. as a student 20, 25, 30 years before. Exactly. And, he, and he, he wants to go to the same neighborhood and walk down the same street. And he becomes a, a kind of ghost, uh, giving advice to the young man about how to handle love. And they say uh, that some people, uh, reviewers say that th he, he's pretty much react, reacting to his own experience. 25 years ago. So you've got these, these, these young kids, um, what was he Jonathan and Sally are this young couple and her friend Monica comes from, the, the, from California, from, from the movie industry and wants to stay with them, right, in Rome. And Monica is this really, she knows how to get men, you know, she's sort of sexy. So the plot is that Jonathan, who's got his girlfriend that he supposedly loves, starts messing around with Monica, and then he's going to leave Sally for Monica. So the whole plot goes that way. And at the end, Monica gets a call from an agent that she's got a, a gig, right, in, in, in L.A., uh, also to be in Japan for a number of months, a month in L.A., a big, a big part. So here she was ready to go and, and have a life with Jonathan, but at, the, at that moment, she says, forget it, you know, and she run, she's going to run back to L.A. So he realizes how shallow, you know, he is. Now that, and, the, and then the fourth one is, okay, yeah, Haley, I got Haley, I got that. This clerk, Leopoldo, right? Roman clerk. He's in love with the boss's secretary. She's beautiful, right? She's an, another Penelope Cruz, right? And he's a nobody, right? He's just a clerk, right? Um, in an office, right? Instantly, he becomes famous for some reason, just like Woody became famous instantly, right? So, so it, he's getting barraged by all these news media, blah, blah, blah. What underwear do you wear? What do you blow your nose with? It's, uh, he's a celebrity. So he's being pulled like paparazzi, you know, just like poor, uh, what was her name? The Princess Diana and, her, and that guy that got killed. So, so they're, they're driving him crazy. So he, he says he doesn't want this, he does, and his wife doesn't know what to do, and the kids, and it's like, a, and so he becomes the star. And then after a few months, they, they tire of him, and they find somebody new, and then he, he, they forget about him. So then he's, he's in the streets, nobody recognizes him anymore. So he sort of misses the notoriety, right? So the, the, the moral to this is if, if you're, if you're, a no, if you're a nobody, life is difficult. But if you're a celebrity, it's difficult. But it's better than if you're a nobody. 
So I think I think I covered all four because I'm. I, I mean, because I, of course there's a lot more. You know, it's oh, Woody Allen. It's, you have to look at it a few times before you you get all the details and the nuances. Uh, I I thought that last one was really extraordinary because it it, it made fun of the whole paparazzi thing, of the whole media thing. He was he had fame for a moment. They followed him around and asked him, you know, how he shaved in the morning. And and the crowd went wild when he told them how he shaved. This man had nothing whatsoever to offer the public conversation. Um, but they asked him these silly questions about his personal habits, lifestyle, his toilette. <laughs> and he answered them. And all of a sudden, he was famous. And I think the most crushing part of that, again, you know, making fun of the Italian media and maybe media in general, was that all of a sudden one day he walked out of his house and he expected the uh, the crowd of paparazzi uh, to be there asking him silly questions about the soap he used and the like. And all of a sudden they're not. And they follow some other guy uh, who was also a nobody. And they ask him all the questions and ignore our friend. I mean, it's it's really uh, high. It's high comedy. It's high irony. But then that's 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 Woody Allen. Uh, this was really a very good movie. And I, I have to say, it was precious little about love. It was more about comedy than love. It was more about Woody Allen than, than true love. It was making fun of everything. But um, a moment before we go to the next one, just to comment on this, George. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, many of us are locked in. We don't go out. So our entertainment is, is, is TV. It's cable TV. Uh, we don't mind spending the money uh, for cable TV. Various, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, net Netflix and the like, uh, subscription services. And there's tons of movies. Every time you look, there's another dozen movies they put on. They're spending millions and millions and millions and hundreds of millions producing these movies and handing them to us because they're making so much money. <clears throat> but most of the movies are in the genre of violence vengeance, dark, midnight movies, people hating each other, killing each other. You know, and, and for the average individual psychologically, if you live in a world of, of movies, even call it entertainment that's about hatred and killing and vengeance, um, you know, you, you get to feel, because you're stuck inside, you get to feel that that's what the world is like. So it's very important to get out of that. It's very important to look at a romantic comedy it's very important to see a Woody Allen movie. And frankly, it's the minority. There are, there are others, of course, but it's the minority of the movies on cable right now. You have to make a conscious decision about looking at a romantic colony of, uh, uh, comedy for comic relief, Shakespearean comic relief. In the darkness, you know, you need a little light. Otherwise, I think, you know, you, your, your, your mental state is affected. And that's why we should go to the second one now. The second one is is pure romance. I loved the second one. Can you talk about that, George? A, a news, a, a, a current newspaper reporter. She works for one of the uh, tabloids or newspapers. This is a, a last letter from your lover. Last letter from your lover, right? Yeah. Uh, 20, 2021 just came out, right? Her name is Ellie and she, uh, one of the senior reporters passes away. So it was, and she takes over the, the, the role at the, at the newspaper for, that the senior editor had died. So she, she's looking through some, some of the, the records, you know, from her, from the woman who passed away. And she finds uh, um, some, some letters or something like that in the files where it, the former reporter never was able to follow this through to see who these letters were from, right? They had found it in the, in the archives, right? So she's a sleuth, right? She's trying to figure out what, who these letters back and forth love letters are from. And it only says J. It, J illicit, illicit love letters. That's illicit. what attracts her. Yeah, it's an illicit affair. And yes. she's very curious like an investigative reporter would be. Exactly. And the thing is, there's two love scenes, two love relationships, her and this uh, archivist, uh, 
Indian guy. Indian from Indian. He was very, very good actor. I really enjoyed him. Excellent. Is a good sense of humor and um, yes. uh, sweetness to him uh, that made that made you understand why she liked him so much. And she was difficult. I mean, she's she's sort of a, a difficult person when she's reacting with this uh, uh, Rory. Initially, you know, that's the name in the in the movie. His name is uh, Nabam Rizwan, right? Uh, She's nasty with him, but he's very nice. He's very, he gives her the rules. You know, you got to do things a certain way for the archives. So, so yeah, he, and that, and that's, that's her relationship. But the other relationship is this uh, woman who was married to this very wealthy man, industrialist in an unhappy marriage of convenience, not happy. Right. And, and she, this reporter, this financial reporter from another newspaper comes and they're on the Côte d'Azur, which I love. I know the cut the Côte d'Azur. And they're they're on vacation. And he comes to, to interview the husband, Sterling, right? Mr. Sterling. And and then Mr. Sterling gets called away just at the last minute for one of his enterprises. So she's there, Jennifer Sterling, with um, what's her name? Anthony O'Hare, right? Who's the newspaper paper reporter. I'm going with their names in the movie, right? And they sort of start doing things together because the, the husband got is, is back in London, you know, for business, right? His business is more important. So they, they start little by little, they fall in love, right? And they start having, passing letters between each other, right? But into a P.O. box, right? It goes into a P.O. box. So, so the, the whole plot of the movie is to try to find basically who these letters were from. So the, this Ellie, the reporter, she does all kind of sleuthing, right, in the archives. She goes into the basement of the archives, tries to find more information, and finally is able to track down Jennifer Sterling in, in her 70s, right, in London. And she goes and she tries to get Jennifer Sterling to, 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 to link up back with O'Hare but um, initially, Jennifer Sterling doesn't want to do, uh, deal it. So this Ellie is persistent. She waits outside of the apartment, the, con the, the condominium, where Jennifer Sterling and Jennifer comes out to go shopping, and she corrals her. And she's able to get, and then by then, uh, Jennifer Sterling, the woman, Diana, you know, that was the, the, the older Diana Kent played, the older version yeah, of, of, um, of Jennifer Sterling. She says, oh, okay, okay. And then she and O'Hare meet in their 70s and renew their relationship because um, Mrs. Sterling had left the industrialist after having a child from him. So then you, at the end, you see the two of them hugging and kissing and hugging each other and kissing. And that's, that's how the movie ends. So it's sort of like what the reporter today did was get these two people back together in their twilight years. So interesting movie, a lot of love scenes. In the interim, Jennifer Sterling was in a, he was, she was rushing to get to the train uh, to meet him, to leave her husband back way back when. And she has, she's in an automobile accident and she has amnesia and her husband who goes to the hospital finds this letter in her, in, in her, in her purse, right? But tells her that O'Hare had left and gone to New York he was going to the United States. So she, he tells her O'Hare is dead. And then she's in the marketplace in London. He comes back to London for another gig, right? He's doing another sh um, um, reporting on another uh, guy, another person. And she sees him in the marketplace and she faints because she was under the impression that, that O'Hare is dead. Her husband lied to her. So the whole thing, finally, she's able to, to, to you know, to, to, to get back with O'Hare at the end. Then there's a lot of twists. If you remember anything else from the movie, you know, chime in. And, and... Well, I, I, this was my favorite between the two. Although I, I love Woody Allen and I love what he did. And this was, um, you know, a first class movie. In case you were wondering whether Woody's career, you know, is over because of all his legal troubles, nah, this movie was a, a reminder of just how great he is. But the movie, the movie uh, last uh, love letter uh, was was really fabulous for me. I, you know, it was it was an emotional movie. It was an epical movie. It was a statement of long term 
lifelong commitment and love. Yeah. Um, it's the perfect way to get away from all those hate and vengeance movie, uh, movies on cable. And I thought that uh, Shailene Woodley, she was the, um, you know, the woman, the, the heroine, so to speak, American actress. Um, most of this took place in England, yeah? Well, some of them took place in Boston because they were involved with uh, Harvard, I think, uh, part of the plot. But Charlene, yeah. Charlene Woodley was was just fabulous, great actress, and you know I couldn't remember where she came from, but she was in a movie called Adrift, a couple of years ago, which was about a a young couple that took off in a in a in a borrowed sailboat, trying to cross the Pacific Ocean, I think from Australia, and the trouble they ran into, and finally her boyfriend died and she survived in the movie and it was a survival movie um but it was also a romance movie and she was really really terrific in that movie and she carried the same kind of it's a kind of a feminine strength that she carried from adrift to this one she was perfectly cast in this movie and the romance really clicked between the two of them um the guy the guy uh, o'hare did you call him o'hara what was his name uh, okay the, the yeah he was he was really perfect he was the the perfect englishman uh he was he was at the one hand uh, very respectable and um you know english careful conservative personality on the other hand he was really romantic and and the the script was out of this world the script was extremely romantic and touching i was touched by this movie i I went back and looked at the trailer for our discussion today, George, and it just blew me away again, you know, the way it worked. And, and what is very interesting is this is an old template. This is a template out of a movie made in 1957 uh, called An Affair to Remember, where, where the, um, the star-crossed lovers were supposed to meet at the Empire State Building at a certain time and place Months later, there was their little commitment to see if they still had anything between them. And that's exactly what happened in this movie. They, they agreed to meet, but as in the 1957 movie, uh, and was by the way, it was remade. It wasn't just once this movie. This movie has been made again and again. Um, uh, she, she gets into an accident uh, you know, in New York. <laughs> Uh, she's trying to meet him. Is it in New York or is it in Europe? She's trying to meet him at a train station. I think that was in London. And she gets into an accident just the way, uh, you know, the, 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 the female uh, role got into an accident in a fan, remember, uh, on the way to this Starcross meeting and, uh, and is unable to make the rendezvous. And she winds up, as you said, she has amnesia. They don't get together for years and years. And the only way they do get together was the, you know, the uh, insinuation by, uh, by this uh, uh, investigative reporter. Uh, and it's very similar to a fair remember and very touching at the same time. What's touching also to me is that it's an epical movie. This is a movie about how they found each other against all odds in 1965, I think it was, 65, uh, in London. And, uh, and, and she always, that is the woman character, Sh Shailene uh, Woodley, the actress, always, um, always de denied him for one reason or another, and, but he kept coming back and he knew what was on her mind over a lifetime, between 1965 and current times. What, how many years is that? This one's at 50 years. And, and um, he keeps coming back and she denies him and some things go wrong and automobile accidents and whatnot. Um, but then finally they are reunited. And you know, George, you said they were old at the time. It didn't seem to matter. They still had the same strong feelings for each other after a lifetime of being denied. It was epical. It was really high level romance. It was in a funny left-handed way. It was Romeo and Juliet, but for a lifetime. That's what I thought about that movie. It's a total winner for me. <laughs> Now, one similarity is that with the Fellini, the 1952 Fellini movie that Woody uh, pulled the plot, and in this one, they also pulled from a previous uh, uh, movie. So that's that's the interesting part here as well. Yeah, that was the that that's the link there, and. Um,
yeah, so uh, that was another thing I was going to say about this. Um, yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I did a little research on Shailene Woodley, and she's got a very interesting heritage. She's part African American, uh, distant, a few generations back, and, um, you know, uh, and sort of like Markle, you know, the, the part, part African American. So, and, and it talks about her African American family and how, how they rose, you know. So it's really in her, her in, she's got an interesting background, you know, uh, ethnic racial background. So, uh, you know, that, that plays into everybody, you know. Yeah, she, maybe, maybe so. Maybe it's part, you know, part of the success of the movie. Of her, and, and, and so, she's a successful, yeah. I think, so I think the, the whole idea about uh, taking a look at two romantic movies, uh, romantic comedy and this uh, pure romance movie about the last love letters. And by the way, before I forget to tell you, the, the love letters were really beautiful. And they remind us about the power of writing, the power of language, the power of connecting with people in writing. Um, and he was so good at it. And he, he in the character, he, he wrote these really wonderful letters and the mean husband um, kept them, stowed them away, never let Shailene see them, stood in the way. And, and you say, gee, what a powerful love affair that was, that these letters were written, not received, but she never forgot him. And it was um, uh, powerful. Anyway, I, you know, my point that I made before, I think it's uh, all the more important. We should be looking for movies like this. We should be looking for romantic movies. And although I like rom you know, romantic comedy, uh, there's not too many can hold a candle to Woody Allen. Um, and uh, there are, you know, there are a lot of very romantic you know, movies. You know, you and I reviewed uh, the Cold War, a romance in in Poland, uh, you know, and and Paris um, a few weeks ago. And I think those movies are the kind of movies that that take us away from COVID, that take us away from being locked in, that take us away from the dread of the pandemic and, and the, all the worries about the government in Washington and the world today, <clears throat> and all the things that are happening that would make you sad. We need this from Hollywood. The other thing I would like to offer is, is this. Um, movies have become more than ever before in the past 18 months, they become global. I mean, that, you know, it, it goes back to the, the, the thing about the Cold War, the Cold War movie. It's global. It's a global movie. It's in Polish. Um, and if you flip the channels around uh, Netflix or Amazon or the others, you find movies from every country. And the movies, uh, may they may have American partners in them. You know, we were watching one, which is, I think we ought to review, you and me, called uh, Hit and Run, which is an Israeli movie. Um, and it's excellent, excellent movie. It's, it's a series, actually. Um, and what I'm saying is that although there may be American partners in making these movies, and I'm sure there, there have been in most of these movies, the Americans have offered you know, their production expertise and maybe their writing or plot expertise or their acting and directing expertise. They are movies made in foreign countries. And so what, what we have here is a global phenomenon happening during COVID where hundreds, hundreds, thousands of movies are being made for the big screen at huge budgets, um, which are really excellent coming from every little country you could think of, including, George, romantic movies. So likewise, you and I can find romantic movies in various countries, in Europe, in Asia, everywhere, and learn about how that particular culture treats the relationship between men and women. Their roles are different than the, than the US. Not to say that the US is uniform because I think the roles of lovers in the US um, certainly differ from region to region, but they certainly are even more different when you go far away in countries that we haven't visited, for example. Um, in every country, you know, there's romance of one kind or another. And I, you know, I hope that you and I can have the, the opportunity to look at some of these romantic comedies. I don't think that's a, as, as common as straight romance. Uh, movies that will 
help us understand the relationship and the romantic experience that people have and the screen experience that uh, the filmmakers make of these various romances in various countries. I hope we can find some movies like that, George, and report on them as well. Yes, and one thing I wanted to notice, uh, the, in the, the last letter from your lover, things have changed. Relationships are not, without letters now, it's all email and it loses something. It doesn't have that depth that those letters have. So um, the changes with technology have really changed the way love relationships develop as well. So yeah, so that was another point. There's been changes. Yeah, but, one of those letters were poetry. Yes. And to go further, his remarks in that movie were poetry. I mean, it's not only the words, but it's the way he, the actor, delivered them. They, they struck you every time he opened his mouth, and he said, "What a guy! What a guy!" He was, he was, he could teach us all about romance, couldn't he? Yes. <laughs> well, George, uh, I have to ask you this question: sure. um, Which one did you like more, honestly? I'm into comedy now. Am I? Am I you know, I mean. Um, I like the Woody Allen movie because it was light, you know. The other one, you know, I'm happy for them, but I'm not in the same place in my life, you know. So, so uh, I sort of like happy for them, but then don't want to face my own situation, you know. My ex <laughs> has, is deceased, and we got divorced, and and then other relationships didn't work out. So, um, so the happy movie. I mean, for me. As good as, this, as, the, as the, the, the last letter from your lover is in heart wrenching, I, I need, I, I like comedies. I like to laugh and Woody Allen is phenomenal. And I, I had a lot of laughs. I was constantly laughing. Every scene, you know, with, with Federico the clerk being mobbed in the streets, I couldn't help laughing. So, I mean, for me, it was the Woody Allen movie. And, and you know, maybe for you, it was the last letter from your lover, but. Um, you know, each of us have our own, you know. Well, right, let me system. let me go ask you another question. I'm saying mine. So, <clears throat> as in the days of Siskel and Ebert, how many stars uh, would you give each of these movies? Okay. Um, Woody Allen movie, an eight or a nine. Last letter from your lover, maybe a nine or a ten. You know. Um, there's a lot of silliness in the Woody Allen movie that are a little too far, a little too far fetched. So I would say, in terms of depth uh, and and weight, it would be the the last letter from your lover. That was about a ten, and yeah, Woody is is close, you know, from a different perspective. So both really good movies. I would suggest anybody who's interested in movies to watch watch both. Yeah, my my ratings would be about the same, George. Actually. Well, looking forward to doing this with you again. There's so much more coming down the pike. Uh, we learn so much, whether we realize it or not. And as you mentioned, and I think this is a, a real takeaway point, is that we see these movies through the lens of our own experience. We see, appreciate these movies through the lens of our own lives. And so um, you, can't, you can't take yourself out of the equation. However you rate the movie, it's exactly. your life rating the movie. <laughs> so true. So true. Thank and you, George. Gonna... Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank George Kaysen, our movie reviewer here on the movie show on Think Tech. Really enjoyed this discussion. Uh, we'll do it soon again. Thank you, George. Aloha. Thank you. Take